Oh, yeah, okay, I thought I'd just do a quick demo of just uh, sort of what I'm seeing. Um, to start, this is Arnold uh, 4.03, um, or M2A 4.03, in Maya 2020.2. And I've seen the same behavior in uh, 2018.6 and earlier versions of Arnold. But um, yeah, so let's just start. So um, well, before I get into this, I'll just pan around my viewport. You see, I'm getting, you know, easily over 100 uh, frames per second tumbling. And let's just hit play. And yeah, over 600 to 700 frames per second. So it's just going crazy in an empty scene. Um, I'm, what I'm going to start with is I'm going to create some stand-ins, uh, just some duplicates, about 2,500. Um, and um, in this case, this is just actually just uh, a stand-in node. There is no um, file path put into it. It is just an empty, uh, empty node. And there's 2,500 of them. So as you can see, with them all in view, just tumbling around uh, the duplicates, and, you know, it's uh, around 16 frames per second, 16, 17 frames per second. And as you zoom in, it goes up to around yeah, 24. And let's just see what it's like when we hit play. Yeah, 24. Let's... If I go in and I select all these guys and go down to their shape, let's disable the... Uh, the draw of them. So, where is it? Mode bounding box. No, nope, not that. Here we go. Stand and draw override. I think it's three to disable draw. So now they're no longer drawing in the viewport. Um, yeah, I'm get. I'm up to about 34, 35 frames per second. And. Still have regained some performance. I'm going to select them all right now, just actually hide them in the outliner. And let's hit play again. Now I'm up to 52. So even though that the drawing is disabled, there is some overhead there to them, to them having uh, existing in the scene. And yeah, if I were to delete these now, I'd go back up to, you know, ridiculous uh, frame rates. Yeah. So there, yeah, there's something, there's overhead there. And um, GPU instancing doesn't make a difference. I forgot to turn that on, but it wouldn't have made a difference from uh, my test. So let's just make a clean scene and do the same thing again with uh, instancing the um, stand-in. This will make a big, big difference when, if you enable uh, shading. Um, so let's just do that just for the... Uh, the fun of it. So if I switch this to uh, shaded, they all pop on instantly. If these were duplicates, it'd be a bad time. You'd sit there and it just spin its wheels for a, a very long time. So with instancing, this is actually uh, pretty good. With even with shaded, I'm getting around 30 frames per second, which is better than uh, what we were getting before. But it's still uh, still not great. It's all right, but this is only with 2,500, which is, you know, a lot, but it's not a crazy amount. And this is 2,500 of um, the same thing. Not that it matters, because as we saw, like, the empty AI, AI stand, it still has issues. Um, so I'm switch it back to bounding box. Performance is pretty much unchanged, which is very interesting. So it is not like the drawing or shading of has any sort of bearing on the performance. As the bounding box has similar um, frame rates. And every time we start a new scene, I have to turn this back on. So I'll turn on the. the wait, did I do that? Oh, oh, clicking way too fast. GPU wants to sing. Yeah, yeah. So that's all we want. I'll turn off my. There we go. Yeah. GPU wants to sing doesn't make has no bearing on the performance for AI stand-ins. So yeah, that's basically my experience with the stand-in. So as these go, if I delete a whole bunch of, of these, oops, selection's taking its time. I was gonna say, if I delete a whole bunch of these, there we go. 
that's probably more than half deleted. Um, yeah, as you can see, the performance is now, it's like uptick, I'm getting 90 frames per second now. And as you remove more and more, uh, the performance will go back uh, and approach to what it's like with an empty scene. Up to 125 now. Yeah. 200 you know, plus frames per second on playback. So it's interesting. So each, uh, each stand-in incurs some sort of uh, overhead. So it's clear to see it again. And let's actually try this uh, same sort of experiment, but using the GPU uh, cache node. This is the same... Um, Instead of an as file, it's a lumbic, obviously, of the same geometry. So again, these are duplicates, not instances. If I turn on my GPU instancing. And yeah, this is pretty good actually. Yeah, getting up close, you know, it's hovering around um, 80 frames per second. Playback, it's actually uh, slower. But um, tumbling is quite fast, and as you zoom out and you see more and more and more, it gets it slows down. But yeah, for fully uh, shaded, this is not too bad. Okay, but what's uh, more interesting is actually if we introduce the uh, instancing to the GPU cache. Oops. And turn on the GPU instancing. Yeah. Yeah, this is like butter. Easily over 100 frames per second. It has no bearing whether it is, you know, up close or viewing everything. It's, yeah, 200 frames per second. So yeah, this would be the ideal scenario if I could just, uh, you know, use the GPU cache as my uh, the viewport, you know, representation, and then at render time, it was it would uh, get converted to a, an ASP procedural uh, standard somehow. You know, it'd be nice if like you can go down to here, switch to AI translator to procedural, and just plug in a path. But that's not the not the case right now, or at least it doesn't seem to be easy to do that. So, yeah, that's just sort of what I'm seeing. All right.